even though I am now sort of maybe legally own a lot of things from the vision of man or maybe in my heart and my mind and I'm, I'm storing and caring for land and energies and people, I keep kind of checked in. I never want to get really too far mm -hmm. from this place of being where if all of this was lost right now, how do I feel? And to a large extent, I mean, if it was like suddenly lost, I'd probably be a little shocked, but right, I was yeah. just like, well, okay, I, mm -hmm. I'm actually like just really good yeah. because I'll, I'll just go to a park and just be in the woods and just start. It won't change anything, yeah. really. Welcome to the Early Retirement Advantage Podcast, where you will get weekly doses of inspiration to pursue financial freedom while caring for your mental health. After being diagnosed with several mental illnesses during the pandemic and getting fired soon after that, I decided to turn that into an opportunity to pursue FIRE, financial independent and retire early. If you're ready to kickstart your financial freedom journey while taking care of your mental health, you've come to the right place. You will learn the mindset and strategies to retire early from anything that no longer serves you. A really empowering way to think about this is also your internal state is entirely within your control. Like, sure, you can't control the weather. You can't control how someone thinks of you. You can't control yeah. whether your crush likes you back. But what you can control is how you feel about things, your perspective, the way you view yeah. things. Absolutely. So I find this super empowering because let's say if I think my happiness depends on the weather, that's completely outside of my control. Yeah. I can't be like, let it rain or, you know, yeah. let there be sunshine. Like, yeah. I can't do that. And so guess what? I'll be. I'll be, you know, always unhappy because my mood depends on whether or not I can control the weather, but I can't actually control the weather. So same thing with everything that we're talking about, about money, about the feeling state always comes first because this is something that is actually within your control. Mm -hmm. And also this is something that directly impacts you. Because again, we talked about how there's a lot of wealthy people in this world and they're hella miserable. They have all the money in the world and they're still miserable. And so this shows us that, you know, money is not the secret ingredient of happiness. And when yeah. you're happy, do you really mm -hmm. care about exactly what material things you have? Not really. Because money yeah. is the path to happiness, yeah. right? People want money because they think that will make them happy. Mm -hmm. So if you're already happy, are you still caught up with exactly what material mm -hmm. things are in your life? Mm -hmm. But also back to your principles of money, when you get to that feeling state, money just comes naturally. You don't need yeah. to like force it. You don't need to like exert so much willpower in order to like make things happen yeah. because you think everything is up to you because like in reality, it is not. A lot of things are not up to us. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. I've been something of a stu student of ancient philosophies and like long Long before there was maybe technologies and stock markets and those ancient cultures, they literally really clearly talked about these principles yeah. without all the clutter of sort of all the details of our busy modern lives. But that's what they talked about. Like there's this one ancient book, it's in a language of Sanskrit called Sri Ishupanishad. And it talks about how the reality, the universe is perfect and complete. Mm. That's the state of... The natural state of the universe is perfect and complete. And we are part of that universe. So if we're making the right choices, if we're in a state of wisdom, we also feel perfect and complete. But it also so describes how every individual, because it could be different for each individual, every individual in their alignment with the universe. Again, if somebody could have tremendous wealth or someone could be meditating in the forest, but there's something that's right for you. And that thing which is right for you will come automatically. When you try Try to push beyond that due to some kind of like lust or greed that's where it gets messed up and it's sort of like i'll i'll use a boating example because i'm familiar and a sailboat has a hull speed and it's like with very little effort you can start moving that sailboat to a certain speed mm. and it's very very easy to get it to go beyond its ordained hull speed so to speak you can just pile huge engines on there burn and you can get it to go a little faster the effort and energy being expended to go beyond what's natural. Yeah, it's disproportional. Yes. And so I think it comes back again to as we start this process, and maybe our life course will make us very wealthy, but in this current moment, so yeah, I think it's important to say I'm definitely not suggesting like, you have to get wealthy, you have to get to, and you need to work 80 out. Like, no, I'm actually saying begin this process, as we talked about, from this state of being. Maybe it's a little bit of invest, maybe you got a good job, it's a little bit of investing, setting mm -hmm. aside, or maybe 
it's getting back to work after some years, right from the beginning, enjoy the process. If you're doing it right, you're already enjoying the process because really the journey is always just the process. There's no actual destination other than just being well in here. Yeah, exactly. The most crucial thing is how you feel, no matter what happens on the outside. Bottom world. line. Yeah, it's about how you feel. So yeah, we talked about it really good. You brought up like control. And something I say that even though I am now sort of maybe legally own a lot of things from the vision of man or maybe in my heart and my mind and I'm, I'm storying and caring for land and energies and people, I keep kind of checked in. I never want to get really too far mm -hmm. from this place of being where if all of this was lost right now, how do I feel? And mm -hmm. to a large extent, I mean, if it was like suddenly lost, I'd probably be a little shocked, but right. I was yeah. just like, well, okay, I, mm -hmm. I'm actually like just really good yeah. because I'll, I'll just go to a park and just be in the woods and just start. It won't change anything, yeah. really. And I think one thing that you told me that is so eye-opening is that you talked about how your life when you were 27, was it 27 or in your 20s? Your life right now is not that different from your life back when you were in your 20s. Like it's still very simple. I've had a lot of variety in life, a little bit older. So I've mm -hmm. had a lot of stages of life, yeah. you know, family life. And, you know, mm -hmm. my children are grown now. Yeah. And when I initially made my move mm -hmm. outside the city, I was running a business that I loved starting and loved growing. And I met many wonderful people. I was providing at that time uh, support services for recording studios. And I loved musicians. I loved music. It was a lot of fun at that age to be playing with the technology of the time. But I had some profound experiences where I knew that I was feeling really called to go deep into nature. And I sold my business. I still have a lot of friendships with a lot of the people that I knew from back then, uh, but I felt good about my business. And I sold it as a principal too. I felt I sold it doing what I felt the right thing. Someone else could have paid me cash. There was a very different, but I felt like I'm supposed to sell to this studio. And then they ended up merging and it's like honored something within me. And I moved out here and went simple, very simple. Like I came from a place where I had tons of equipment and all kinds of recording gear. And I mean, a whole production facility to I didn't even keep a working stereo system. But I spent a lot of time in these woods culturing this, a real place of peace where my mind wasn't so busy yeah. and, and like that. And uh, I did have a young family at the time and it was very beautiful. I got to spend time, wasn't off to work going so I could have really loved having my young babies and children and being here with them. So it was a really rewarding. But I would spend a lot of time in these woods mm -hmm. like we visited many hours a day yeah. and often dream dreaming about what's so kind of important to me now, which yeah. is sharing this inner experience and sharing the nature and a lot of what I've done along the way of just gathering life experiences, maybe hopefully gathering a little bit of personal maturity from all those experiences, increasing or opening to receiving some more of the abundance mm -hmm. that would be necessary or just, yeah, the power, the energy mm -hmm. to fulfill these deep impulses for a mission, a purpose. And, and that's really important to me. Yeah, of course, I want to be happy. I'm a part of it. I'm not going to exclude myself. But for me, you know, to be true to my values, my ways of being, my spiritual values, and my values in relation to how what I feel is good for the earth and for the all the other beings living on the earth, humans, of course, but also including the earth herself and the trees and the animals. And I care about all these things very much. I had, I feel really fortunate that somehow along the way I qualified by being dutiful in life and trying to show up to certain circumstances that mm -hmm. like, yeah, I'm able to do things right now and help other people and help employ. And even there, there's not a lot of like, oh, I'm doing this. I'm right. just sort of like, I'm just playing a part. And this is really a general thing that applies to what, you know, the finances we're talking about, mm -hmm. but we have a part to play in life and that's what it is. And the universe will supply what you need to play your part. So, so trying to know what your real purposes and I would just say very non-judgmentally you, you you might some I mean there okay so before I moved out here I, I was a little bit of what they used to call a, a yuppie a little bit but yeah like I was like really into cars and stuff like that mm -hmm. too like nice German cars and things like that mm -hmm. and it was a great pleasure with that but it like became so unimportant yeah. like I sold those things and came out here and so 
there, part of life is getting more deeply aligned with your values. Yeah, there's stages of life. There's natural things. Whatever toy you may have had at a little girl that you wanted so bad, it's, yeah. it's, it's not that. And, uh, you can maybe remember it wistfully, but like yeah. right now, it's not a thing for you. Yeah. And so we, you know, as we go through stages of life, that uh, getting these deeper, more fundamental principles will help us live all the stages of our life better. And when really become very much more fulfilled yeah. by maximizing the type of experience that we want uh, and that's all fine we're just here to learn ultimately let's not burden ourselves with certain you know defined goals like so much money or this or that or yeah, but yeah. and that is not completely within our control anyway so why put so much yeah. emphasis on something that is just not completely within our control while what we actually can control is our inner world and what yeah. actually matters is still our inner world showing up to play that part as fully as possible yeah. without burdening ourselves with other concepts about what we should be doing or what should have happened or what did yeah. or yeah. might not it's yeah. it blocks it it does yeah. well thank you so much for sharing your wisdom with us and I'm sure you got a lot out of this conversation. If you have any questions, definitely let us know in the comments. And just to wrap things up, like what would you say is something that you want my audience to do? Or, you know, after watching this video, is there any like action you feel like is appropriate? Well, like beyond what we've, you know, some of the little practical principles that we've recommended. I don't know if they do want to get back or ask you something or, or yeah. even direct something to me, I'd be happy to respond. I would just, if, if anybody listens to this uh, well, I'm just wishing everybody very well anyways I wish you all much happiness and deep peace and ultimately just love well, loving yourself we're all here to learn to love more and that's what really all this is comes down to is expressing love if we have something we're meant just to express love with it mm. you know going back to what I said in a different video unconditional love is not something you wait for something external to happen in order for you to receive it doesn't come from you know a very loving person person or you know someone outside of you it's actually something that you give yourself like you decide that i'm gonna i'm not going to set any limitations on experiencing love and you just allow yourself to experience love no matter what it doesn't matter what the weather is or you know whether someone likes you or you know how other people perceive you or how much money you have in your bank account like no you get to decide that you're gonna let yourself experience that love no matter what and that is true unconditional love and i feel like that is definitely something that we all can have it's all within our control again going back to the point that our internal world our inside world that is within our control and you know the external world like sure we can do our part you know we can fulfill our role in this world but in the end like you know what happens on the outside it is yeah. what it is we're at the end but i'll chime in on that yeah and because there there is a natural duty there is a mm -hmm. soul level duty that we have mm -hmm. that may override other duties you know mm -hmm. like this person wants me to do that or the government's like you know mm -hmm. but there is this fundamental true thing each and every moment and of course, like that's the duty, the deep duty. And it may express in going to work, showing up, taking mm -hmm. care of our child. But it is I'm gonna have to edit this one up. If you can be patient for a second. I wanna feel this out. Maybe it's gonna be the last thing I say. So the part that's unconditional love, that's an experience. Mm -hmm. That's the B part. That's it's not something we do. Mm -hmm. It's not even something in a sense that we create mm -hmm. secondary to ourself. Mm -hmm. There is a there is a phenomenon of self realization but it is our intrinsic nature it is our core identity it's the natural state of our true being when we realize who or what we are and different you know we're saying unconditional love there's this state of being and and how i was you know experience called an ananda mm -hmm. it's this natural state of love and bliss it's our core experience of just being who we are mm -hmm. what we're experiencing now with all these other things like we are not anxiety yeah. we are freedom mm -hmm. so it's really more about the decluttering and letting go and just accepting mm -hmm. who we are our true nature it's not to some extent it's we're not trying to get to this place of unconditional love it's more we're just allowing ourselves to accept it we don't create it it's what yeah. we are it's not a state we create it's not a state we become mm -hmm. we just let go of everything else and realize this is me
this is really me and no one can take this away from me because it's me. Thank you so much, Gary, for sharing all that wisdom. And, you know, as someone who has experienced it all, you know, you've experienced the glamour, the riches, the toys, you've had so much financial success, you've had the businesses, but in the end, you go back to this simple life, you go back to living in nature, you go back to, you know, going deep inside and yeah. letting go of all these like conditions and going back to your natural state of unconditional love. I honestly feel like this is the way to go. I'm just part of it. It's nothing that I've created. I'm yeah. just one person sharing my experience here now with yeah. you because it's really nice hanging with you. Yeah. But and, it's like, mm -hmm. you know, I just even the ancient story of yeah. Buddha. He was a prince of the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's unbelievable reality. And like, when it, he left all that and went to a deeper place. And not saying you're a Buddha, but you. No, I'm definitely not. But, <laughs> you but, had, you know, all these opportunities to get all the toys yeah, that you want. Yeah. But in the end, what actually makes you happy yeah i'm an individual with my story and, and yeah. what i was trying to convey is right. like i'm not making any i'm just sharing my uh, story yeah. mm -hmm. like i didn't invent any wisdom mm -hmm. like i've heard so much from other people like you said earlier i've studied i've heard people speak or heard by reading you know witness but there are a lot of people before me who have spoken and people after me but each of us has our individual life story our yeah. part to play in mm -hmm. the in the cosmos and yeah, we want to individually fulfill our role brill as brilliantly as possible, as yeah. powerfully as possible. And Gary has definitely fulfilled his role very powerfully. I remember the first day I stepped onto this property and um, into the Chai Tiny Home, I just felt this sense of safety. It was a rainy night and it was, you know, kind of dark and gloomy. But the moment I stepped into this property, I just felt this sense of comfort. And if you also want to experience something like that, you know, you might not feel ready to like fall Fully commit to living simply for the rest of your life but if you just want a little taste of it to see what it's like to live simply to be in nature to be you know mm. surrounded by music and you know the sounds of nature and be surrounded with good people and mm. have interesting conversations yeah come visit it'd be so fulfilling to me to meet people here anybody who's inspired or who might hear this that's what i'm here for and i love to receive people and however it serves them mm -hmm. because you know i have people and they love to spend time and i serve tea and i yeah. take them and, and they love to talk and I love to listen yeah. and I've been doing a lot of talking now and awesome and also people sometimes come just for retreat yeah. I've had yes I've had beautiful connections where mm -hmm. a lot of our communication took place after after they left because mm -hmm. they totally came like from the moment they arrived they were like in silence uh -huh. and they were just feeling out the whole place and mm -hmm. it was wonderful yeah. but they got it yeah so you are welcome to visit Gary and absolutely this wonderful oh my wonderful. god Absolutely. Share this episode with anyone you think can benefit from it. Thank you so much for tuning in and don't forget to subscribe. If you absolutely loved what you heard today, be sure to share it with me by leaving a review or taking a screenshot of this episode. Tagging me at cherrytongue.co and sharing it on Instagram where I'm most active. I can't wait to connect with you. In the meantime, go out there and seek your freedom.